Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak. Okay, what you're looking at here is a relatively new aquarium. It is one that most hobbyists will set up. It is a Fluval 5-gallon aquarium. comes with the Fluval light. It comes with a filter built into one of the ends. They give you uh, 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 sponges and a little bit of carbon and some uh, noodles of some sort. But what I did is I put the gravel directly on the bottom of the aquarium. This is not using a plenum. The gravel size is anywhere between one to three millimeters, and it's no more than, I'm going to say, uh, inch to inch and, to, let's say an inch to two inches. You know, it would vary from front to back. But this is a common problem that I have when I would set up an aquarium and put the gravel directly on the bottom of the aquarium, I'd wind up with problems like, like what you're looking at. Yet no fertilizers were new, used, no additives were used, there's no BCB baskets, and there's no plenum being used in this aquarium. So let's get on uh, with the video. Cyanobacteria, what is it, and can we get rid of it very easily? The short answer is no. Once it plagues your pond or fish aquarium, it's there to stay. If you want to use the word it's very contagious, then it would be rightfully so. It is in every water bitope in the world, and it's one bacterium that is next to impossible to totally get rid of completely. Even with antibiotics, it will eventually become resistant to them and become a superbug. We also must remember that cyanobacteria is over 6 billion years old. So it's been around a long time. So it's pretty well learned how to cope with all different kinds of environments. It has the capabilities of photosynthesize and gets its energy th through such. It's prokaryotic, and it is known to be the earliest form of microorganism life on the planet, better known as blue-green algae, or filament form of algae, or string algae, which is a misnomer used for the, its name. The chloroplastic found in higher order plants and eukaryotic algae all evolved from cyanobacterial ancestors by means of endosymbiosis. If left unabated, it can grow to several feet long and cover everything in sight. It can and will make a beautiful pond and or aquarium look unsightly to onlookers. It will cover and smother any competing plant life it clings to including saltwater inhabitants, like in many reef aquariums. It takes no prisoners and makes everything its breeding ground. The older your system is, pond or aquarium, the better it likes it. The small five-gallon experiment aquarium in the next eight photos is now over two months old. It has been cleaned up some, with the cropping of the cyanobacteria long threads like strands before disinfection takes place. Through the next eight day pictorial history of which I'll be showing you will, you, which I'm showing you, uh, you'll be able to see just how one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide at 3% solution will bring this bacteria under control and yet not hurt the higher order of plants or inhabitants. Hydrogen peroxide is a very strong oxidizing liquid chemical that when used in an aquarium and our pond reacts like ozone and can become a bacteria disinfectant. Barley straw actually makes a form of a hydrogen peroxide that is slowly released through bacteria decomposition of the straw back into solution to help control this nuisance bacterium. A better way of controlling cyanobacteria is with antibiotics that are naturally created through the biological filter like that of a noxic filtration system or 
most biological filters if they're running correctly. The problem is, as filters age or clog, now anoxic filters don't clog, but as they age and clog, their ability to create enough of these antibiotic substances are lessened. In a pond, for example, this could be because of change in weather conditions that will in turn affect the filter's ability to produce these antibiotics in greater numbers to adversely influence the cyanobacteria growth. In the aquarium, the filter also plays the same role, but the gravel and available foodstuff may become more accessible to the cyanobacteria to get a better stronghold in such a small, confined space. A lot of hobbyists believe the competition of available foodstuff with higher order plants will be too competitive for cyanobacteria to grow. But they are wrong. Many algae, along with cyanobacteria, will begin to form on plant leaves as the tank or pond ages. A mono shrimp from Japan may be a good band-aid at first for some of the algae, but not all and definitely not for cyanobacteria. The plethora of different algae can overwhelm the hobbyists into submission if evasive action isn't taken immediately to rectify the problem. So with each monthly water change, a little hydrogen peroxide added to the replacement water will go a long way in keeping cyanobacteria under control. If that seems to be a problem for yours. One problem that several hobbyists do have though with newer aquariums is they buy plants and then they started adding fertilizers right off the bat where the plants actually do not need fertilizers added for several months down the road. But unfortunately, this is, of course, what's being told to hobbyists, that they spend a lot of money on plants and they must start giving them food immediately after a brand new aquarium is set up. And that's not really true. If you set up an aquarium and you spend a lot of money on plants, uh, please do not fertilize or add fertilizers into the aquarium. If you're using a substrate that will feed your plants, let's say like the Fluvol ADA, that's all you use. Don't add anything to it. When you make a plenum, don't add fertilizer, fertilizer tablets, anything to the aquarium. Let the substrate that you're using do its thing. Even uh, substrates such as like my goldfish aquarium, you see the, the crypt growing. Uh, I've never added any fertilizers to the aquarium as of yet, and it's over 10 months old. So be patient and not add fertilizers to the aquarium or potassium or anything else to your aquarium until it becomes a few months old where you will see that uh, maybe the plants will need it. The problem is people buy a new aquarium, they set it up, right? You buy a bunch of plants, spend a lot of money, put the plants in, and then they don't start looking good because your aquarium is brand new. The first thing they start thinking is, oh, I need to add fertilizer because it's starving because it's a brand new tank and doesn't have any dirt or, or anything for the plants to feed on. No, don't do it. You're only going to wind up with trouble with algae, and you definitely don't want to wind up with trouble with cyanobacteria because it makes spores and it can feed itself uh, once it starts growing. It's actually a self-feeding bacteria. So be patient. If your plants aren't looking good, that could be a lot of reasons why your plants aren't looking good. It could not be just because of you're not adding fertilizer. It could be because they're going into shock, as I've explained in other videos, and they may have uh, been growing uh, emergent instead of submergent, you don't know. But this is where uh, a lot of new hobbies get themselves in trouble with brand new aquariums getting covered with algae is because you just have to be patient in this hobby. 
And I think some of the old timers will agree, patience is going to be your best virtual, uh, virtue of success. And just take it from someone who's, who's done this more than enough. But uh, by the photograph you can see it is subsiding. Cyanobacteria is one of those things that uh, uh, I've seen to usually get it when I put my substrate directly on the bottom. And this aquarium that you're looking at had no additives added to it. Okay, so it came in, the cyanobacteria, from something else. Something had to bring it in. If you look, there's some plants there. Probably came in from the plants. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. This is Dr. Novak. Until next time, happy fish keeping.